Welcome back, pitches, to another video. It's been a while since you see my sexy face, have you? Well, let's not focus on my handsomeness and just let me give you a little update, shall I? Well, um, first of all, to say is that every Friday, starting this Friday, I will be going live. Now, this live I'm doing this Friday is I'm reacting to JoJo. Now, if y'all didn't get the notification or decide that, oh, there is a notification, but let me just uh, ignore it. You better be there or be square. You hear me? You better be there. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. But besides that, um, yes, every Friday I will be going live. I will be doing reaction videos of like anime, movies, uh, what else? Um, you know, animation. Any video y'all want me to react to is, uh, you know, I, I'll I'll do it. All right, I'll do it. Now, this Friday I will be going live around the afternoon. All right, so. Just be there, right? I don't want to be going on live looking like a fool and nobody shows up. All right? You subscribe to me for a reason, all right? Whew. All right. That is the update. So, yeah. Enjoy the video. Oh. Okay, so today's video, we're going to be doing another versus battle wiki. So, yes, this is the one that I wanted to do the most. Because they are both sword users, and they both use the power of fire. And or some people arguably say Hiei is planet level. He's able to destroy planets. So today, I want to go deeper into this versus battle and see the, you know, to know the outcome of this fight and before we get into this video you better like and subscribe if you want more content like this i am trying to do as much content as i can on this channel whatever content it may be so if you like this you know this video or any other videos i have done please make sure to like and subscribe and check out the icon above you is going to show up for my, you know, my most popular videos and check them out and see if you like them. So, yes, fucking like and subscribe already. I know y'all not liking and subscribing. All right. All those views and, the, and none of you are liking or subscribing. Come on now. Just do it already. Just do it. Because if you don't. We can get really weird. But anyway, yes, today's video is Arthur Boyle from Fire Force versus Hiei or Ja Ga Shi Hiei from Yo Yo Haiku. I say Yo Yo Haiku. What the fuck? Yo Yo Haiku Show. Haiku Show. Yo Yo Haiku Show. My bad. What the fuck? Why do I get Yo Yo? It doesn't say Yo Yo. Ugh. Anyway, now for each side, we're going to have them at their absolute best. At their absolute best. We're going to have Hiei with his sword as well so he can compete with um, Arthur's sword play. Alright? So before we get into the whole breakdown of who wins and stuff. We're gonna go over each size, you know, skills and abilities. And we're gonna go over their feats as well. So without further ado, should we get started? Yes, we should. So for my other video, I already did uh how strong is Arthur Boyle video. If you haven't checking out, 
the icon above you will link you to that video and check it out for yourself and and you want to know why arthur boyle competes with this guy so i'm going to start with he ate first so you know because people are more familiar familiar with him so yeah so he ate or known as ja ga she he ate is one of the main protagonists of the manga and anime series Yu Yu Hakusho. Due to being born as the unit of an ice maiden and a fire demon, he was cast out and thrown over the mountain in which he was born. After surviving, he was found and raised by a gang, uh, yeah, a gang of bandits, which later reject him due to him using the tear stone to attract enemies to kill. After losing the stone when fighting a demon, he acts and receives the Jaken Eye from Shi Guri, who taught him the art of swordsmanship. Since he since the impact caused by his power to considerably drop. The implant, my bad. The implant. Not implant, my bad. I read that wrong. Thanks to his eye, he reached the Ice Village and found about the existence of his twin sister, Yukina. He then traveled everywhere in order to find her, and his search led him to the human world, or human realm, where he met Yusuke Yurameshi. Now, <clears throat> what is his abilities, y'all might wonder. So his abilities are pretty much like the Jagen Eye. No, the Ja, yeah, Jagen Eye. Yeah, I said it right. Ja, the Jagen Eye. With his surgically implanted third eye, he it can tele, 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 fuck. All right, you're gonna bear with me here. All right, you're gonna bear with me. I'm going to say these things with, if I get it right or not. Okay. A disability so I can't really say these words just like that all right I'm not perfect nobody's perfect all right bear with me telekinetically telekinetically you know what y'all could just laugh at me all right just laugh at me if I get it wrong he could telekinetically move objects erase memories and control weaker minds demons and humans it's also it also allows him to transform into his green skin ja ja jin shin form with his eyes all over his body in this form the power of his jaw again is greatly increased allowing him to blind his foes and he also has this dark dragon of the darkness flying because he just loves spamming that damn move but he, yes, he has the Dragon of the Dark Darkness Flame, which he uses his Yu Yoki to summon a dragon made of the flames of the demon world. The dragon is not only a projectile; it can be used as a neutral sub sub supplement. I think that's it. I think that's yeah, that's right. Neutral supplement to amplify one's yoki. Initially, it would damage his arm to use the technique, but he later perfected the technique, so it doesn't really damage his arm anymore. He also also know also has the another technique known as the fist of the of the mortal flame, when he can channel the flame from the human world in order into one or both of his fists and he could use these techniques to change his hand-to-hand -hand combat abilities very impressive all right he also has the flamethrower because uh this is like the flamethrower um ability which he when he when he blasts his human world flames from his mouth and use it as a long range attack. You know, this won't even matter against. <laughs> this is this yeah, this is kind of useless against um Arthur, but I'll get to that in a minute. He also has 
the Sword of the Darkness Flame technique when he can chant the flames in order to forge a sword of fire. It is weaker than a dragon of the darkness flame, but it's much less dangerous to use. So yeah, that's going to be he. All right, that is he. Also, wait. Also, I forgot to uh, mention because people want to correct me on this. He's going to correct me on this. So he also has pretty much this astral projection ability because he can actually separate his physical body with his spirit. So yeah, he can do that and um, attack you with his spirit. I think he can, I'm, I'm not sure. Cause I haven't really finished um, Yo Yo Hakusho myself. I was getting there, but I haven't finished it. So yeah. He also is, you know, resistant to fire and ice as well because it doesn't because he is a fire and ice hybrid per se also um he has you know I already told you he has telekinesis he has flight paralysis inducement aura key manipulation energy manipulation telepathy mind manipulation and enchanted vision with the jogging eye he also pretty much has this, um, ooh, excuse me, ooh. oh, regeneration. Well, it's like, it's like low mid, so, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's, um, that's gonna be he is. Alright, that's gonna be he is. He is, alright. So, we're gonna move on to pretty much, um, uh, Oh, I forgot his name already. All right, so Arthur Boyle is is this um excuse me is this character that is from Fire Force. He is the rival of the main protagonist Shinra Kazakabi. If I said that wrong, correct me. And pretty much he has this uh, uh, he has this um ability um with his sword called Excalibur, which he actually can create and emit fucking plasma at will. And he's a third generation type of fire. No, he's a third generation type pro pyrokinetic. There we go. And with this, he has the ability to pretty much become stronger when he uh is delusional right and what i mean by delusional is that he imagined himself as a knight as a knight king my bad my, as a knight king and the more delusional he is the stronger he is all right so with arthur as a third generation who has exceeded the abilities granted him and able to raise the temperature of the flames he created therefore allow him to fabricate and control the fourth state of matter called plasma. He uses this this plasma sword to cut through objects with great ease and has the same effects of as plasma cutting through you know cutting through shit. So Arthur uses Ex, uh, Excalibur, which is the hilt by the way, he, that channels his pretty much his um plasma exclusively in his light hand, otherwise known as lose all ability using the sword uh, effectively. Arthur, uh, not Arthur, shit. Excalibur has shown the proficiency of the ability to deflect and fend off against flames. With his Excalibur, Arthur is capable of cutting, easily cutting through metal and generating electricity. He also um, possesses raw, uh, incredible raw physical strength, capable of sending an opponent bigger than him in size flying with a single punch. So yeah. <clears throat> he also has these other skills, right? With his ability. So he pretty much can has lightning man lightning manipulation. Because um one at one point he was fighting on the clouds against dragon and he was like literally absorbing the the lightning 
into his sword and it wasn't affecting him and he was able to attack dragon with it and he also has this extinctive reaction because he constantly by constantly valuing life and the possible possibility of an attack at a at any time they can be aware of the situations and evade despite it being casual movements earlier he's also pretty much uh immune to being on uh, having his thoughts read and has sense intent so yeah he attacked the person that can read thoughts and read movement and he actually snuck up and slashed this guy because he pretty much used this move called non cell that pretty much he shuts off his brain and you can't really <laughs> you can't really detect what he's gonna do also um to further do this he, to further even make this more you know crazy is the fact that pretty much he has this uh this ability that he's being trained with called super fire and it's pretty much this hysterical strength right so if it's like if he fears that his life is in danger he will get a, a he will get a drastic boost in power speed and durability with super fire right and not only that but he pretty much go he, he can go further beyond this with uh the not the press of death because that's what it's called the, the super fire is called press of death he could use steel for death and steel for death allows him to even go further beyond because let me explain hysterical strength for those who didn't really click on the video like i already told you about arthur boyle hysterical strength allows you to use 100 percent of your power because normally a human can use 30 percent of their power right and since he went beyond that, you can even say he's like, I don't know, goes like 200% of his power or whatever. However y'all want to scale it. But he was even going further beyond that. And he can do some crazy, crazy shit. All right. Just I'm going to leave it as that. I'm going to leave that into, into the feet department. So, yeah. That's on going to be Arthur Boyle's side. So, who wins? Who wins here? Well, before we get to the winner, we're gonna have to go through their feats, right? We got to go through. So for we're gonna start with Hie. All right, go back to Hie. So his strength is well, he's pretty much you could just say he's superhuman at this point. Because he was like able to create a large crater with a punch. He was able to beat up a pile of goons. He can brawl with Yusuke. And we know how strong Yusuke is. Um, he can shred a beast, a B-class demon easily. And for reference, while on the high end of the class, Togoro was a B-class demon. Togoro. We know how goaded Togoro is. He even kills a room full of A-class demons. And A-class demons are put on the level of mythical beasts and gods from many re religions. So that says a lot about his strength. Because, whew. Well, the class isn't fucking um, Yu Yu Hakusho for those who have not watched it. And if you have not watched it. What the fuck have y'all been doing with y'all life? Like seriously, if y'all even watched Berserk, how the hell y'all didn't watch Yo 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 Hakusho? But that's besides the point. The the classes of the demons are really fucking strong. And I can say the S class demons, the yo the S class demons are arguably planet level because a lot of people argue about planet level beings in Yu Yu Hakusho. His durability should be scaled the same with his strength, right? Because um, he can immediately recover from a Yusuke punch. And um, <laughs> how strong is Yusuke, you say? 
Well, his one of his punches can literally send a Yomi flying with you know he can send him send him flying with one punch, and Yomi is a S class demon, y'all, an S class demon, and he was able to fucking take a punch from Yusuke. He got hit in the back by a, re uh, a reflected spear gun. Um, what else? What else? He takes a kick from Sinsui, and while he, he was wearing his steel armor, right? And at this point, Sinsui had the power of an S rank demon, and he takes a kick from him. So this is two feats of him taking attacks from people that can damage S, uh, S class demons or comparable to S class demons. And you can even um you can scale him being thrown off a high cliff as a baby and survive. <laughs> oh, also he brawls with Sensui. Now then we're gonna move on to his skills. All right, his skills. So he was able to move fast enough to surround Yusuke with after images. He was able to dodge Yusuke's punch, saying he was just strolling he slaps Yusuke around keeping him keeping up with him my bad keep it up with him as he sails through the air he dodges a point blank spirit gun he cuts since see Sai Yuri you into pieces he moved fast enough, he slashed him 16 times before Kuma, Kubagawa even saw him move. And he sped up even more when the, in the dark terminal to the point where several demons couldn't even see him while Yusuke moving. He slices up several demons without even being shown to draw his sword. Uh, what else? Uh, he loops off Ma Kin Ta. Ru's arm before he even realizes it's gone and then he proceeds to clown him even worse by putting his sword through his head easily he also saves Yusuke from a runaway truck and appears behind sniper on a overlook before you realize what happened now we're gonna move on to Arthur's feats all right now I already know that Arthur can cut through steel with his Scalibur, right? But he can also really deflect or block attacks from other uh, attacks as well. Like he was able to do to block a, a fire arrow and disperse it, despite the um, person firing an arrow. An arrow claiming nothing can stop his arrows. In contrast, Shinra Kazukabe tried altering one with a fire chain to kick and it did nothing but Arthur was able to do this and with um <clears throat> with Arthur a comp a comp a accompanied there we go accompanied Chinra and his sister Iris to ask Vulcan to join their fire on um, company he left his Scalibur hilt at home and he told Vulcan that he needed to feel nightly in order to for his powers to work so Vulcan makes a makeshift hilt and, and uses and to use as a sword, uses one of his donkey machines and act like a horse. And gives him like a tarp cape. Now aim for now armed with his new hilt, Archer's Excalibur is stronger than before. And is able to slash a huge portion of the land with one swing. Now this is this not a very impressive like what um fucking uh he a can do because well I don't know how strong his slashes are like <laughs> I don't know how strong his slashes can be and I already told you about the breath of life breath of life is pretty much like observation hockey from one piece you just you just sense the breath of life and if like if there if there's no life behind that attack then it's not real not really him anyway And not only that, 
when he actually punches away an inferno that can destroy multiple city blocks. But yeah, just just a punch with a backhand punch. He sent him flying. And he was able to be fast enough to react to show Kazakabe's um severed universe, which is like him slowing down time. He was slowing down time right here. He wasn't completely using his ability, which is able to stop time, but he was able to react to an ability that was able to slow down time. And, and I'm going to pull it up, but uh, Sho was able to approach fucking Shinra and walk around him less than a second. Less than a second. He was just, uh, he was just casually walking around him. And just like observing him, at, and he was really far away from um, from um, Shinra, by the way. He used his ability and he was just like walking around him, just observing him. He had the time to do that, and when he was done, one second has passed by. And he even attacked um, Shinra with his sword. So, for like, I don't know how fast that is, being less than a second. Or, you know, less, you know, less than a second. What, like, what is less than a second? Please let me know what less than a second is, by the way. Like, because right here, um, pretty much time is slowed in that, in that, pro in that, um, right there. And not actually frozen. Because, therefore, attacks and objects moving fast enough in standard time can match shows movements in the slow time. As shown with Arthur surviving a fatal blow through his quick reflexes, and while several several viewers was still active, so Arthur is pretty much reacting to a severed universe, and with time being slowed down, right? He's able to react to this, and he got even faster than this, all right? Because this Arthur right here was beginning, like beginning of the um, arcs and stuff like that. And he was able to quickly react to his severed universe. He was slowing down time right here. So, yeah, pretty much. So, you can really say that Arthur is pretty much relativistic or close to light speed. You know, you're like, it's, he's pretty much close to light speed. Because he was able to react to Show's severed universe, right? And we know that Show is pretty much, uh, he's... Pretty much moving faster than normal, much faster than normal, and you have to be considered faster than light, and and pretty much ignoring the laws of physics in order to bypass separate universe. So yeah, you pretty much relativistic right here. It's relativistic reaction speed right here. And for Arthur, he can also tank explosions from infernos, blows from Harry on weapons, high and high enough falls and sore slashes and just shrug them off and i already told you about his um his um super fire or the press of death he can surpass his normal normality you know his normal fucking um shit i don't know what my mind is right now he can sub uh, bypass his normal you know feats and shit like that and plus he cannot be affected by electricity or lightning because it's plasma interference pretty much so with all of this with the press of death he can be much stronger and much faster and more durable with you know the press of death and the super fire and because his base form only uses 30 percent like i said and while Super Fire allows him to use 100% of his power with training that feels more like hazing, Shinra and Arthur throw everything they had at Ben Amaru to achieve hysterical strength. Which, mean, which means a fight or flight response to your experience when your life is in danger. Grant you beyond superhuman strength and power as your soul burns through. Now we're gonna go to his biggest feats because all of this right here doesn't really compare to, compare him to Hiei, right? And that's what you're probably thinking. Well, we're about to go into the Arthur versus Dragon 
um, feet. Because he was, um, he can, like, create capes of plasma that hangs around his shoulders. And this cape increases his defense capabilities against other flame attacks. Even incredibly powerful attacks like dragons, explosive fire breath. Meaning, he, and meaning this, he can pretty much manipulate plasma in any way he wants. Pretty much. Also, he can create a, a larger soul. A lot, yeah, a larger sword if he wants to. So yeah, that's that. And he possesses a king, a king kinetic eyesight, eyesight, allowing him to track the smallest movements and react quickly. He can follow Shinra while using his speed, in, you know, enchanted by Rapid. And Rapid is pretty much him going faster. And we have him like not using rapid before able to react to lasers so he's even more much faster than that so that's also another relativistic feat right there and he made which is, you know makes him way much faster than he normally was however this instinct to react results arthur insist insist instincts instinctively blocking and parrying any attack he sees leaving him vulnerable to illusions and misdirection although after his training with captain shimon of company eight he learns techniques that allow him to distinguish illusions from reality and has overcome his weakness now <clears throat> his reaction speed is going to be a problem from here all right his reaction speed is going to be a problem but let me wrap up his feats and then we're gonna go into the discussion. So he can survive getting cut through the moon and the temperatures of space, which is um, um, negative 270 degrees, um, yeah, negative 270 degrees Celsius. And um, when he was suffocating, right, he was suffocating. He didn't really before he even um, suffocated. He didn't really realize that he was in space. He did, he didn't really realize that he needed oxygen. He's that delusional, right? But then he started to realize when when Dragon told him like we're in space, and he was like, oh shit, I can't breathe in space. And he started to suffocate, and his brain was starting to shut down. But then he equips the Star Ring that allows him not to only breathe in space. But gather the thoughts of people of the planet, turning them into power. And to further explain this, all of this is in Arthur's head. So he's literally ignoring the laws of physics. And he even creates a fucking um, RPG abilities, right? He was able to uh, gain RGB abilities. He was able to teleport instantly. He was able to pretty much breathe in space now with the star ring, turn people's thoughts into power, and even warp reality as it, as he knows it, like as he see fit with his perception. Because he was even to turn the stars into stepping stools, right? He turned the stars into stepping stools, and we see multiple stars within this panel, and you know, throughout the whole fight, pretty much, and they all look the same stars. And so he was able to turn these stars into stepping stools for him. So yeah, he's pretty much warping reality as we know it, right? And then we have um fucking dragon with his same blast, right? His same blast was able to pretty much fucking blow up these stars as well. He blew up multiple stars in the background. And he was able to actually casually punch through a fucking star as well. And that, this was through their battles, right? Through their battles. We have Dragon that even on Earth, he was able to fucking eradicate the fucking sea itself. And he was able... And then we have um, Arthur able to fucking fight on clouds, able to stand on clouds. And they really have to leave the planet because they even say like, Oh yeah, this battle is not for us. It's too crowded on this planet. We need to go somewhere that can handle our battles. So yeah, pretty much we have like fucking Arthur 
able to warp reality with his um, perception because he has grasped the power of the Adola, right? That's what he does with the star ring and the star ring allows him to fucking manipulate reality because since the cataclysm was happening he was able to grasp the power of Adola and the, the cataclysm was able to warp fucking reality yes able to warp reality of the human world because before then the cataclysm um before the cataclysm um he was able to pretty much not he not he um the cataclysm was able to pretty much turn normal people and yes it was drawn drawn as normal people into anime like people and or creatures able to talk this was the cataclysm it does it works reality to be completely bizarre and this is what explains uh, the power system of Fire Force. So at the end of the day, who wins? Well, we have Hiei able to fucking battle the um, S-Class Demons. And each S-Class Demon has immense power, earning the fears of the spirit world as they are capable of destroying the planet. Both immense strength and a powerful energy based ability such as barriers blasts and demons under dimensions distortion my bad so we uh, yeah the s-class demons are pretty much yeah they and you know they're they're planet busters pretty much they're planet busters and pretty much um he was battling against a fucking um yeah, he was battling against a fucking S-Class Demon. Or had the power of an S-Class Demon, per se. But he was... But then again, people. Then again. He was easily defeated by Mukuro. Mukuro. I think I said it right. Mukuro. Who is a powerful upper-class demon. Alongside the um, three kings like, such as Ryzen and Umi. Yumi, my bad. Yumi. Cause he was able, you know, he yes, he's able to survive a punch from an enraged Mukuro, who is the strongest fighters in existence. But however, he it should be noted that he was inca incapacitated for an extended, uh, an extended amount of time. Yeah, so yeah, he ever survived a punch, but he was easily defeated by an upper class demon. So yeah, um, sorry people, I'm sorry to say, but the uh, uh, Arthur takes this win. Now, why do Arthur takes this win? Well, I'm about to go over it. <clears throat> Arthur takes this win because one, with the uh, uh, still for death, he was able to cut the entire planet in two and even stop the cataclysm. He was able to cut the planet to stop the cataclysm and even fill the entire planet with hope so they will not be uh, filled with despair and, and continue the cataclysm. And he was able to warp reality to have the stars able to be um stepping stool that's way beyond um he has pay grade that's way beyond his power so how the hell does he a even beat him huh how does he a beat him please explain to me please explain all because he was able to fight against a, a s-class demon does that mean he's on par with the same person he got his ass beat at the end of the day sure he sure he faced a person that had the same power as a s-class demon but then you have upper um, class demons that are way superior and he got his ass clapped. Now come on. Come on. Do you really think Ar you, he beats Arthur? I don't really think so. Arthur, not only he, he can just teleport around and just fucking um, tag his ass before he even tried to uh, attack him. But uh, Arthur, Arthur pretty much speed blisses this guy. Now we only have um, Hiei who was able to, uh, you know, be commented by Mukuro that he was fast and has consistently proven that he was one of the swift swiftest individuals in his reality. But um, where's any? Where's all the? Where's the um, fast and light feet? Huh? Where's the fast and light feet? We have fucking Arthur who's able to react to fucking slow down time. Like, come on. And he got even faster than that. 
able to fight against with um Dragon, who was able to fucking speed blitz around Ben Maru, and Ben Maru was able to react faster than Rapid. And I already explained how fast Rapid was, because without Rapid, he was able to casually dodge lasers. That's so rev resistic. And he got even faster than that with Rapid. And he, he could even move beyond the speed of light with his um, Adorable Burst. But so, yeah, he was able to fucking speed blitz around fucking Ben Maru, who's rev resistic. And that means he is way faster than before. Way back, way faster than before. Because he went to his um ultra form and they was just fighting around the entire space and shit. The entire space. So yeah. How does fucking EA win? How does he win? He's not touching Arthur. <laughs> he isn't. His reaction speed is completely, completely outclassed. Like like <laughs> he ace um reaction speed is outclassed here. There's no way. He, he it's outclassed. Movement speed outclassed. Attack potency outclassed. Now y'all couldn't really say that he was equal to you on Yusuke Yurameshi by his own and Mukuro's assessments. And he absorbed the Ka Koku Yuha, further increased his destructive capacity. But he was still got his ass beat by S Class Demon, who is planet level, alright? He still got his ass beat. Comparable, sure. Y'all yeah, can arguably say he's comparable. I don't think he is. But, um, yeah. We have Arthur, who was able to fucking cut a planet in half. Cut the entire planet in half. And, warp reality. Teleport. Like, what, what, what is he gonna do? Huh? What the fuck is he gonna do? Now, y'all probably gonna say, ooh, uh, his plasma, his, his plasma sword can't hurt him because he, he's immune to fires or some shit. Well, guess what? Plasma is not fucking fire, all right? Plasma isn't fire. It's way hotter than fire. Way fucking higher than fire. All right? The sun is made of plasma. Y'all really gonna put, compare that shit? No. No. And not only that, not only that, he was unaffected by lightning, which is hotter than the surface of the sun, by the way. Y'all really, like, come on. Give me some um, darkness flame feats, all right? How hot is that? How hot is the um, darkness flame? Sorry, y'all, but I'm just going to say that Arthur wins this battle. There's absolutely no way that fucking Hiei can counter his abilities because pretty much... Any fucking uh, fire attack he does, it's not going to really affect Arthur that much. You know, I mean, sure, like, uh, Dragon's attack was able to vaporize half of his body. But Dragon's attacks was able to fucking actually destroy stars. Like, come on now. And he was able to tank his attacks multiple times. Multiple times. The only reason why he tanked, why he, um, why his, um, uh, half his body is gone is pretty much because he was ready for death. All right. He was ready for death and he, he pretty much lowered his defenses at that point to, to, to deliver the final attack. So yeah, um, there's no fucking way, <laughs> like there's no way that, um, he is going to beat him. There's no way. He will fucking cut Hiei in half and it's fucking over. Like, <laughs> it's fucking over. It's not It's not even a, a fight here. This isn't a fight. And uh, the only reason I'm doing this battle is because a lot of people think that uh, Hiei wins. And uh, they're completely biased, alright? They're just completely biased. It's, it, they're just biased. The only reason they own pick Hiei is because, oh, uh, oh, I know this character. Uh, yeah, he, he wins. I don't, I, I don't want to really... I don't want to research... On the other character, it's just like it's fucking crazy. It's fucking insane. All right, people, just <laughs> Amino is, yeah, it's no, just no. All right, so yes, at the end of the day, he a would just fucking win. All right, he a wins. He a wins. 
but let me know what y'all think tell me what you think and um pretty much i'll see you guys in the next video peace